Welcome to the channel, YouTube World. Generation Zero Update 1.05 is now live. If you don't want to hear me rant and read the patch notes, I don't blame you. Simply look in the description box, click the link to the official website. As you can see, the patch is downloading, and boom, there it is. And I'm going to hide my face just in case I end up being in the way. So now that the link is in the description and most people are going to run away and read it on their own and I don't blame them, let us take a look at what the patch is about and there's going to be another separate video on me playing the game casually and seeing if I can pick out anything that's not mentioned in the actual notes themselves. So I want cookies, no I don't, I'm diabetic. So we're going to opt out of the cookies. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the change list for our May update. The first section covers some features and improvements that we wanted to go into a little more detail on, but continue reading for the full patch notes. Photo mode is now here. Black and white, vintage, no filter it seems. We've received tons of comments about how great the world looks and photo mode allows you to really make the most of it. This has been in our heads for some time and we're happy to bring it to you now. Please feedback and let us know how we can improve on it and don't forget to share your new photos. Photo mode can be open either via the remote wheel or the main menu. The skill screen revamp. We improved the look and feel of the page as well as made the skills more easily understood at a glance. Intro island improvements. We've taken a look at player feedback as well as our own data and saw a lot of people were not getting a good feel for the game during their initial experience. We've gone back and looked at ways to improve the feeling of the starting area to give new players a better understanding of the variety the game holds later on. We're evaluating how these changes affect player behavior in this limited capacity as we know that the denseness of the experience in the game is something that is called out by all players. Going forward, we plan to explore other ways of filling up the world, so consider this the start. The main changes to the mentions are Scenes As you explore, you'll come across small set pieces, each telling a small visual story about the moments as the machines took over. Oh, and there's loot to be found for your efforts. World simulation tweaks. Machine spawns have been turned, tuned, sorry, and now include more variety. Sprint, run, toggle, PC. We've worked to make sprinting a bit easier on the fingers. You can now toggle sprint on, so you don't need to hold down shift as you run. Come on, you PC elitists. You can do it. You're part of the master race. You can hold down that little pinky on the shift button. Come on now. Head bobbing toggle. There is now a toggle to stop head bob as it was negatively affecting some players. Oh, okay. The. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. The Pan Sarvarsnagavar 90. Yes, I did that on purpose. Every weapon should be able to use iron sights if you don't have a scope. Happy hunting. Tick spawn in building interiors. Adding some suspense and surprise into the world. Right, because they weren't already in the buildings? Anyhow. Explosive damage tweaks. So explosive damage wasn't behaving properly when it came to machines and their components. As of now, the damage will be applied correctly and should make explosive weaponry feel much more consistent. The sprinting heartbeat. We've heard the feedback on the heartbeat sound being too loud, that's very true, and staying on the entire time you sprint. In response, we've lowered the sound and reworked it so that the sound gets quieter over prolonged running. Wait a second. Shouldn't your heart be louder the longer you're running? Anyways. Sound improvements. Hunting, rifle, silencer shots are redesigned, and loot pickup sounds now play immediately. Save game backups PC only. In an attempt to help protect against lost save games, we now 
create both a save game and a save game back file. In the main save game file becomes broken. If, sorry, becomes broken or corrupted, the game will instead load from a back version. When this happens, you'll see a notification when launching the game. If this backup system should be needed, a small amount of gameplay may be lost. But this will be extremely minor, perhaps just a few minutes. We are also investigating this feature for consoles, but have no ETA at this time. <laughs> Persistent loot. Single items. Items outside loot containers, such as weapons and med packs found at some safe houses, can now only be looted once per player. Hmm. Containers will no longer respawn immediately on relog or fast travel. Damn it! You'll need to move between areas to loot efficiently. Loot will, however, begin to spawn again in cleared areas once a few hours have passed. I'll have to test that out in one of my videos, perhaps. Loot balancing. We've tweaked the amount of loot depending on region. Harder regions offer more loot, while easier regions slash starting areas offer less loot. Our intent was not to overwhelm new players while allowing players who have advanced further to get their hands on more things that will help them against the increasing machine threats in later regions. Makes sense. Location loot counters. Location summaries no longer include loot boxes as it created a sense that you had to loot all the random containers in an area. It was confusing and didn't offer much to the experience. That is so true. I never understood that. Glad they fixed that. Locations discovered and locations completed. We've fixed how these sometimes showed the incorrect numbers. The main change log continues below. Community feedback. There are various changes across different categories that were taken directly from community requests. Interaction radius for dead machines has been improved. Oh, thank God. They are now easier to loot. You know how hard it was? You'd have this big robot. And you'd go to loot it, and you couldn't. You had to, like, fiddle and tinker around, and oh my goodness. Anyhow, display settings changes now require and apply. Click for the change to take effect. It's no longer possible for uninvited players to join your game with the invite-only setting turned on. Yeah, that was annoying. I was playing on my own, and people kept joining in. The stealth indicator will now disappear once you've engaged in combat. Auto-aim assistance will no longer lock onto the components of destroyed machines. Oh my god, that was driving me nuts. Do you understand that thing I've been bitching about for like a long time? I was going to say for months, but the game hasn't been out for months. Where your crosshairs would like go into slow-mo and it would just basically just what they said. It would auto-aim onto dead components of machines. It was annoying. The silencer will no longer block the front sights of hunting rifles when used without and attached scopes. Achievements I don't care about, but I'll read it quickly. Those who have completed the requirements for the elementary, and I just called to say I love you, which is a Stevie Wonder song, by the way, uh, will receive credit for these when you log in after updating. Animation. Weapon change animations will now sync correctly when viewed from the third person in multiplayer, etc. Audio. Destroyed machines will no longer continue to play sound effects. God, that was annoying. Fired bullets that land out of audio range will no longer hang around that location until you move to it. Yeah, that was a really weird thing. Moving through foliage will properly play sounds again. Character. The third person pose shown when holding a shotgun has been fixed to show the correct one. The character preview when starting a new character sometimes did not accurately reflect the options that were selected. Environment. My goodness, this is a big patch. Improvements made to lower the amount of floating props object textures both inside buildings and around the world in general. Various terrain tears have been fixed. You mean like grass, you know, popping through an apartment building? Anyhow. Corrected placeholder title on the newspaper prop in the Hunter's Lodge at Bajorknas. 
Yes, you can laugh. Corrected the issue that could cause players to become stuck in tent openings when entering them. It was a trap. Various fixes to overlapping assets that were causing areas to be blocked, for example, in Scavatter and Bunker. Hardware. Holding down the fire button while switching weapons slash items no longer automatically fires the item that was switched to. That was indeed annoying. Inventory. Oh, please tell me. Apparel now properly stacks within a type. The preview and text description will no longer stick around after an item has been dropped. Right, so remember I was complaining about how you could no longer, unless it was your boots or your gas mask, see the stats that were even on your gear. You would see them before, uh, like when you would go to pick it up and loot it, but when you would put it on your person, you couldn't see it anymore. That was a glitch. I'll have to take a look at that when I do my gameplay video a little bit later on. I'm on limited time right now. Loot. Remove the presated. Hey, I'm French. Remove the presated item that could sometimes be looted by players. You may have seen it before as marked with a crosshair in your inventories. Corrected non interactable loot location at, to at Tokarod Farm. Various loot objects that could not be reached corrected. Removed. Speaking of loot, sorry, before we move on, that reminded me of something. Remember how I kept uh, complaining about the molar PP for those that have been following me and my videos, how if you looted, um, I think it was like a tier three and up molar PP uh, and you got a new one, it would actually replace the one you had and it would disappear and you couldn't get your attachments away unless you got another molar PP with those attachments and then when you went to attach it or remove it it would show you like a gigantic list of like three or four different molar PPs even though there was only one in your inventory so I'm gonna have to take a look at that as well after to see if that got fixed. Machines. Tanks were in some cases not using their full complement of available weaponry. They're now a bit more dangerous. Great! Ticks now correctly deal melee damage. Damn it. Harvesters and tanks will no longer take damage from their own gas attacks. Damn. Machines that are spawned via mission triggers will now correctly keep their accumulated damage during the game session. Tanks should no longer continue to collide with buildings after being ragdolled. Oh, that was annoying. You'd kill a tank or any type of big robot thingy. And if it was near a building, it would da -da 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 it would just like twitch and it was like having a seizure and it was loud and it was annoying. The tick container on tanks has been corrected to use the correct one. Improvements made to lower cases of machines leaning at odd angles when traversing terrain. Improvements made to runner animations. Yeah, they seemed a little bit janky, if that's even a word. Discovering the Fisker back, I don't know, the Fisky back, Whiskey Jack, no. Um, settlement will now correctly add a map icon and it resolved a UI issue on the map screen. <coughs> Excuse me. Clothing in menus, clothing stats now display correctly. Oh, okay, so they did fix that. UI corrections to key binding menus. Missing art has been added to mixtape collectibles. The main menu now has its original background image. So apparently they did fix it. Not that I don't believe them, but I'll have to check that later. <clears throat> missions. Some of these mission fixes will correct issues for those attempting missions for the first time or those who are playing a fresh save. We understand how important these fixes are for currently stuck players and we're working to correct these retroactively in our next update. By reworking our mission system under the hood, we will be correcting current issues and helping to future-proof new missions. Well, that's good, because the missions are bugged to all hell. There's so many bugs, a full can of raid wouldn't fix them. All right. Calling for help can now be completed. Fixed an issue with the Ming King Bunker Warboard that could occur if objectives were completed out of order. We've corrected some mission descriptions to offer more accurate instructions. We fixed an issue where players could needlessly loot the same mission object multiple times. Corrected misleading mission text from the farm mission. Oh god, tell me about it. Additionally corrected the waypoint marker locations. 
seriously, so before I move on, uh, because I'll forget, what would happen is you would get a mission, right? And it would tell you, it would should tell you where to go and update it on your map, but it didn't always, or it did. And then on your map, it would show you the original location where you got the mission. And because the game is so big, right? It's like it's a gigantic game, lots of place to go, a lot of detail. What would happen is as time goes on and you got new updates and or missions, sorry, you would start to forget, no matter how good your brain is, where you first picked up a mission. So you would see the icon on the map and what would you do? You'd run there thinking that's where you needed to go for the objective to your mission. And you'd be like, oh, this is where I got the mission. And you're like, so much hate. Anyhow. Increased variety of enemy types inside bunkers related to warboard missions. It's no longer possible for progress and road to Salty Ham to be blocked by picking up mission triggers early. Improved Sanctuary Mission to make objectives clearer. The Girl Who Cried Wolf corrected inconsistency with mission markers and mission items. Added new waypoint markers where appropriate. Where appropriate. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry. Multiplayer. Options for multiplayer, invite only versus open, etc. will now persist when switching characters. The game will no longer generate an infinite black screen when trying to connect to a game session that's no longer present. It is now possible to correctly join a multiplayer game from a single player session when using the Steam overlay. I'm assuming, obviously, that's a PC only thing. Progression. Fixed an issue that would prevent players from reaching level 31. Skills. The hacking skill, when used on out of combat enemies, will no longer cause them to become entirely docile. <laughs> that's funny. Stability. Various crash fixes. UI. Removed VOIP icons that were incorrectly displayed on the PC version of the game. Missions requiring interaction with answering machines now display the correct icon on the mission log and item entry. Corrected an issue that could occur when attempting to rebind a left click. Weapons. In some cases, aiming down the sights could shift your aim to the right. <laughs> That's an understatement. This has been corrected. Placed objects will no longer despawn early when players move away from them. Animations now sync correctly when firing after sprinting. When reloading the Gratnagavar, yeah, I screwed that up. It should now uh, longer cause a floating projectile to display when viewed from a third person. Fixed an issue that could result in camera raising too fast when firing weapons on auto. Oh yeah, so you go to, you know, shoot, and then boom, like your gun would just point at the moon and, and you're thinking okay I get the whole uh, you know kickback or whatever it's called recoil but that that was just insane experience due to the way experience was counted for destroyed machines players were often credited with unreasonably low amounts that's right this has now been corrected and that is the end boom of this video 18 minutes Almost 20 minutes. This has to be the longest update slash patch note thingy I've ever been through. Unbelievable. And that is why I'm not doing a gameplay uh, footage in the same video because this is too long. And I did get to the point right at the beginning of my video. I said that I would post the link. Okay. In the description box. So I don't feel bad for ranting on for 20 minutes. I don't expect anybody to watch all of this at all. I really don't. I'm not that entertaining, and I don't have that radio voice, okay? So, whatever. But at least you got the information, at least you got the update, the announcement. That was actually the main point of this video. And let's be honest, because some of these videos tend to get a decent amount of views too on my channel, I'm not going to lie, my update videos do better than my gameplay videos, okay? By a long mile. So, yes, I'm going to feed off of that naturally, I'm not going to lie. But I also do want to share the uh, information as well, like I said. So anyhow, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. And I'll simply make sure that when you play the game, you get reverted back to 1.0. And believe me, you do not want to be on that patch. And uh, if you leave a snarky comment down below, I'll make sure the game uninstalls and you can't even reinstall it. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that would be great. I have posted nearly 600 videos in the six months or so that I've been actively, actually posting on my channel. 
I don't push subscribing. I don't, because I think it's crap. But I am just going to say, I am only five subscribers away from being monetized. I'm just saying. And uh, if you don't, that's perfectly fine. Thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, boys and girls, and I shall see you all in the next video when I do some casual Let's Play of the patch. All right, bye now.